Welcome back. My name is Jim Kaysun. We're talking about how to get to know God intimately. And of course, as I say, and I've said many times, me, even if this is the only 10 minutes that you listen to, um, I believe that there'll be a nugget in there for you. And of course, if you want to go back and, and play all of them, you, it's, all, it's all recorded in the archives. You can go back as far back as you want to. But even if you just hear this one, I believe there'll be something in it that'll be of value to you and help you to have a stronger faith in God and, and a stronger belief in the written word of God, which we really uh, explained in session uh, 326 uh, about the science of compound, compound probabilities and how science even proves that this Bible is a supernatural book that no man could have written. All right. So then, <clears throat> we then will uh, go to uh, Matthew chapter 26. Now we're talking about not without blood. And the subject of blood is talked about more than any other subject in the Bible. And uh, it's important. And we have to be careful we don't get our human reasoning involved. Say, oh, we, we shouldn't be talking about blood, you know. That's, that's too whatever. You know, we were doing, I was a meeting at one time, in uh, Norway, uh, Oslo, Norway. And I was happened to be one of the workshop speakers with Teal Osborne was the evening speaker. And uh, so then the Norwegians, of course, uh, the state church is the Lutheran church. And so they had these big billboards about come and see the dead raised and all of that. And of course, Teal Osborne had, you know, in, in his ministry in Africa, he had seen lots of people raised from the dead and everything in his evangelistic crusades. Well, of course, this stirred up the religious people. And so we started the crusade on Monday, and then uh, this was to go all week long. And so we had a special, uh, there was the, the, the stadium, which would seat thousands of people. And then they had a, t a huge tent uh, outside on the property. And that's where they had the children's churches. And they used Willie George's material. Some of you are familiar with that out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. And you know what? In the middle of the week, the Norwegian government shut down the tent meetings and said that we could we talk too much about blood and that it would hinder the, the children psychologically. See, that's religion. <laughs> and that's Western Christianity, just a little too sophisticated for God's way of doing things. So we're talking about blood. <clears throat> and I was, oh, I was just in the process uh, when I got that thought came to me about, about Norway. But anyway, the um, meetings went on all week long as far as the evening meetings in the auditoriums and all the workshops and everything continued on. And of course, T.L. Osborne was able to stay preaching all week. All right, now, in Matthew chapter 26 and in verse 26, I'll begin uh, reading. And they were, as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. And then I just want to just also go to, uh, to Luke chapter 22 and bring it around right down here to about verse 22. And we uh, I'll pick it up in verse, uh, well, I guess we'll have to pick it up in verse 17 of uh, Luke chapter 22. And it's also another account of what we call the Lord's Supper. Then he took the cup and gave thanks. And well, I guess I'll have to, uh, yeah. He take ten. Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them saying, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. All right. So we've worked our way all the way through the Old Testament up to the new blood covenant now. We talked about all the blood in the old blood covenant, and now we come up to Jesus in the new blood covenant. And we need to see the importance then of God's blood daily in our lives. You see, the supernatural walk with God for Christians should be as real or more real than 
this natural realm because the spiritual realm is what created this physical dimension. And, and so that's reality. This physical dimension, according to 2 Corinthians 4, 18, is going to, is going to someday, it's, it's temporary. And even this earth and this entire universe, according to 2 Peter chapter 1, or 2 Peter rather chapter 3, verses 10, uh, beginning with verse 10, talks about this whole universe being consumed in fire in just a little over a thousand years from now. It's temporary, but God's eternal and the things of the spirit never cease to exist. And you and I are human beings as human beings. We are really spirits living inside of these physical bodies. It's our physical bodies temporary and there's coming a time when it's going to st stop breathing and it's going to turn into dust, temporary. But we're spirits. When our body drops dead, we continue to live on for eternity, either in hell or in heaven. That's the only two choices once your physical body stops breathing. Now, if we know Jesus, we'll be part of the new blood covenant, where when we ask Jesus to come into our heart to be our Lord and our master, we are taken from the power of darkness, according to Colossians 1.13, and then we're taken from the power of darkness and transferred to the kingdom of the Son of His love as born-again, regenerated human spirits. You know Romans 10 and 8. What does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach, that if you'll confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that He's raised from the dead, then you'll be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So we need to individually, we come to that place in our life, when we were born into this natural realm, we all have the nature of sin. And unless someone saves us, our destiny is hell. But thank God Jesus came into this world, and with his shed blood, our redemption was paid in full, and, and, he, and we were saved because he suffered the punishment of our sins for us. So we wouldn't have to suffer the punishment. He literally went to hell for us, so we wouldn't have to go to hell. So now we then, if you'll ask Jesus into your heart, then you are spared the judgment, so the punishment of sins already been paid for you. He's already went to hell and come back. He took your place. He, Jesus was our innocent substitute. And if you'll receive that substitute, receive what he did, did on Calvary's cross, receive what he did through his death, burial, and resurrection, then you'll be what the scriptures call in John 3, 3, Jesus said you must be born from above or you must be born again in order to see the kingdom of heaven. So when we're born again, that means then, when, that's when we ask Jesus to come into our heart, that means then our nature is changed from the nature of sin or Satan's nature, it's, the Bible calls it, our, we as human spirits are regenerated. That means we then become new creations in Christ Jesus, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. If anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So now when I asked Jesus to come into my heart in 1972, the old gym is dead. And I be, it became a new gym. I became a new creation. I now became part of God's family. So it's important that somewhere along the line, each one of us have to make a choice. Are we going to receive Jesus and go to heaven? Or are we going to reject Jesus, reject his shed blood and go to hell? That's the choice that we have in front of us. And uh, so I trust that everybody that's listening to my voice has already made that decision, not only to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior and be born again, but then also in Acts 1, 4, 5, it talks about the promise of the Father, which is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And he says in verse 8 then of Acts 1, you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit's come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me. So we need to ask Jesus to come into our heart to be saved, and then we also need to ask for God to baptize Jesus to baptize us with the Holy Spirit so we have the power to live the Christian life and fulfill what God called us to do. Praise God! Well, and that's all because of the blood, the blood, the blood. Not without the blood of Jesus. Praise be to God. Well, our time's gone again. It always goes so fast. We'll talk to you in the next session. Be blessed. In Jesus' name, amen.